Welcome to Energy Stew. This is Peter Roth, your host. And I'd like to ask you, how well are you experiencing time? What do you think about it? And how do you think time works in other dimensions, other parts of our universe, other ways that um, time might be beyond our awareness of how it functions? And we only know it according to our clocks. <laughs> and so in order to get a better picture of time, I've, I've asked uh, an author who has been on the show a number of times before. Uh, she's the author of a book called Never Parted because I've asked her to speak with her brother who has kind of parted, <laughs> but he's still around. He's on the other side and he communicates with Terry a lot. So I asked her to see if her brother Duffy could give us insight from the other side about how time works uh, in ways of understanding it on the other side. I thought that was something that would really benefit our curiosity, but to see it in, in the larger nature because of that. So to help us fulfill this uh, journey of understanding time is uh, our guest for the show, Terry Lynn Siegel. Terry, welcome to Energy Stew. Hi, Peter. Thank you for having me back again. I appreciate it. Well, I'm so glad that you could be here because you have this ability to connect with your brother and really communicate with him in depth of detail and ask him significant questions and he gives you significant answers. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> well, I like them. <laughs> Maybe it's all individual, how we can appreciate uh, how people on the other side um, relate to us. Yes. And uh, you've had a lot of experience communicating with him. And so I gave you a whole series of questions to ask him about time. Yeah. And he responded, and I want to go over his answers because I think it'll help us understand the nature of reality. You know, this is deep stuff about how, it, how life works. Certainly the other side has advantages that we don't because I think they can see clearer um, into multidimensional reality because they're they're more a part of it than we are. I think that's fair to say. I, I'm I I learn every time I try and communicate with. I always you know say my prayer of protection and ask him to visit. Sometimes I ask if he wants to bring others in to help answer these questions because maybe he doesn't know himself. And so I kind of do my little thing and then I always just, you know, it's always exciting what I get. Um, and I never can predict what I'm going to get or how it's going to be answered when I do the automatic writing. It's always a surprise. Right. And that's the point is automatic writing. So you're just, you know, in a sense, in a sense feeling your way with him responding through you and you become his like, instrument of communication. Yes, and I want to clarify because people have asked, and I think people do this a lot of different ways. And the way that I do it is I get quiet, I meditate a little bit, I write down the question that I want to ans have answered. I actually write it down on a piece of paper. And then I just start writing what comes into my head, and it shows up as my own thoughts. Sometimes it shows up as a feels like it has that blend of his way he would speak or think. Um, and I don't edit whatever I get. And so I've learned to try and trust whatever I get, even though it may not make sense to me while I'm writing. So I just keep writing whatever is popping into my head and I'm feeling out. Right. And yeah. I, un I understand that because I'm an intuitive and I, I use intuition all the time with my students and clients. and and I know to listen 
and respect <laughs> respect what I'm hearing and pass it on even and often I'll say to people now I'm going to tell you something I'm hearing and it's the strangest things I ever heard so let me let me just tell you <laughs> and we'll both yeah. just, uh, be surprised how uh, unique this information is yes and I've come to realize that I think at least with me I'm getting uh, communication in the form of metaphor or songs or things that um, they're not necessary, necessarily linear comments but they're a lot about metaphor which I think is a way that spirit can communicate something very complex in a way that I can understand. Right, as if a picture is worth a thousand words. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Right. So let's talk about his responses and get into this idea. And uh, so one, one question I had was, who, who do you, asking Duffy, who do he think he'll be in a thousand years from now? So that's uh -huh. about time, a thousand years from now. And then, but I'm coming from a very innocent space of understanding time as we see it and thinking of it as linear. So his, yeah, you're coming from your human perspective, right? Right. Now. So his response was really not about time being linear, but about time related to what he calls soul space. Mm -hmm. And and soul space means that you're in you're creating your time. The mm -hmm. soul is the master of the time. It chooses the time to experience. So a thousand years from now is just an experience that you can choose or not or whatever, because it doesn't mean anything other than it's a form that we're creating. Because out there, they're in a non-local, non non-time space. So they're creating time in ways that there's a lot of synchronicity out there among all the other souls, too. There's a, like here, there's a lot of agreement that we have about living in the third dimension. We all agree that matter is solid. <laughs> and well, we, I think, yeah. did he say something to you about you're you're asking that question from a point of view that you're thinking in in terms of years exactly and he's saying no because he's saying it's because out there it's non-local uh because you can be wherever you want to be and it's non-time because you can be in any time you want to be so, yeah and you can you can feel free to read the answer i think he was polite all the way through well <laughs> um he went easy on you <laughs> okay, um, he's now in soul space where he can choose to express himself in as many ways as he can imagine. Yes. Uh, if he again wants to experience time in the form of years, again, he will. If he wants to experience time in other ways, he can. It's his choice. Soul growth guides the choice. So I like that too. Not only is it soul space, but it's, it's the soul intending to grow that chooses what space it, and time it wants. Yes, like that's really my understanding. Now, I feel like that's what's really this is about. We're continuously, and the little bit I'm piecing together with quantum physics, the more I learn is we all are in a state of potential always. We don't think of it. We think we're in a solid state, but right. we're really always in a potentiality. Right, we're in, although we're in a lot of agreement about it, mutual agreements that yes. give it more form that's more logical to our conscious minds. And somehow you and I mysteriously and magically agreed to do this show together, and here we are. Right, and I, <laughs> yeah, I'm thrilled that um, he came through and with answers. So uh, another answer he has is, uh, it's, it's complicated, but soul time is the field of possibility, which is where he is 
now in more of a, more possibilities than we have here and a, a huge amount more <laughs> and so time is about possibility and and so when we think of this concept that reality is here on earth and all else is somehow less real so we feel our concepts of time are real while mostly do not as people as people is expand our awareness to understanding that on earth field there are billions of versions of time uh, this is wonderful because mm -hmm. what he's getting into is that we're coming from our understanding of time as humans and when we understand for instance that other life forms they relate to time very differently um, animals that are very fast don't think of themselves as that fast. They think of us as that slow. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but those are animals right? that also have shorter lives generally. And, and even, you know, birds and, and insects that move around very, very quickly have very short lives. But they don't understand that they have short lives. They, as far as they're concerned, they have long lives. And then we take animals that are very, slow like turtles and and there are other you know uh, sea animals that live longer some of them live longer than we do mm -hmm. they're very slow sea and turtles yeah they don't think they're slow they think we're too fast so they're in their reality so they think and their lifetime is appropriate for them and we think of our pets like dogs and cats that have a, a very small lifetime compared to us, but mm -hmm. don't feel that way about it. They're aging, and we know that they age so much more rapidly than we do. That's why, you know, in like 15, 16 years or so, they're ancient and, um, and debilitated, and, um, you know, they die of old age. But to us, it's so it's too short, and we feel always. <laughs> but they, they, as far as they're concerned, this was a long life. <laughs> yeah, well, when you when I look at my cat and how she's so, she seems to be so present every second of her life in a way far greater than I am. Well, no, that's see, our I think that our souls are always present, and we're you might not feel that you're present in mind but you're witnessing that you're witnessing yeah. not being present so guess what you're present <laughs> <laughs> well i think jeff made a reference and i and this was interesting to me uh about you know we we ask or we assume that we humans have the same version of time but you know aborigines do not see time the way that you and i do Right. And, um, so there's a lot of versions of time even amongst humans on this planet. And what if we were on a different planet that has a different periodicity? We would have a different sense of time there. Yep. So it's all about where we are in space and in body, I guess, and species that creates the sense of time. And, and we, you know, but we've created clocks, you know, our show is only going to go a certain amount of time. So we live by time here, but that's appropriate for this dimension. And the other side, they, they have, they live more by pure intention of being where they need to be, when they need to be, how they need to be without a length to it. There's no length now to Duffy's life out there. Right. And there's, and I think there's still an integrity of, uh, I think one of the questions he answered that, you know, when you cross over, you basically go through the door and you're the same, you're the same as Peter you are right now. And with the same skills you've, you've mastered up until now in terms of consciousness. So when you step through that door, it's not like you become a master of the universe. You know, you have your stages of learning. So 
there are other things inherently true. Right. I, lo soul, I love that. Soul time. That's yeah. great. Because but we all keep yeah. learning. We're all at a level. Right. So on the other side, it's a learning curve as well of, of awareness, but it's still us going through it. And we're just in a different place. And, you know, we're not in our physical bodies here. We're in light bodies out there. And we learn how to use them. It's a, there's a learning curve of how to use them. Although we've been there many times before in between lifetimes that, uh, and even during lifetimes, because it's not like Duffy is going to reincarnate and Duffy will be lost. As he says, he's always going to be Duffy in the universe. And, and there, there's a lot, maybe we can ask him more questions in the future about how souls reincarnate in the presence of their awareness or not. You know, who is aware mm -hmm. in the new reincarnation or not? Um, mm -hmm. is, is it a, a new soul that is in a, its own awareness and Duffy will have, or any of us who do that, will have nothing to do with the awareness of the new soul? And or maybe the old souls and the higher self, which is a whole other story, can integrate into the awareness, and, and maybe they do, and we just don't know it, that we're being aware, but our higher self and maybe our other lifetimes can visit our awareness. I think there's a way in which your desire or intention or ability to open yourself up to possibility kind of helps create the map for this you yeah. know right there's so much that we don't understand yeah and um i know that at my older son's wedding my father-in-law had passed on and my mother-in-law was sitting there um in the, in the front row and i knew that my father-in-law had come to see the wedding from the other side and mm. so I'm asking my guides, so what's he, where's he going to watch the wedding from? And they said, oh, I said, is he going to be, because at that point they said he was standing in the back of the, of, the, uh, you know, of the room. So they said, no, um, he's going to channel his energy through his wife's eyes and watch the wedding mm. through her. Mm. And I never nice. heard of that before. I had no idea what they were telling me. But it's, Very nice. Yeah, and, it, and you know, I, I like it. I, I, I believe that I wasn't uh, lied to from my guides about it. <laughs> it just sounded, you know, not quite something I've understood before. So, um, and then I asked him about scheduling meetings out there. <laughs> Which was a really funny question. <laughs> <laughs> right, because we do have a lot of meetings, we have gatherings, there's a whole life out there, there's a whole world out there. And so if there's a whole world out there, what time clock do they use? So how is time measured out there, for instance, to gather together? You know, do they send out a text? And it be that, what, I mean, what time do they go by? What is right. time? And, he's, and his response was, really that um, it's soul time. <laughs> so um, they, what they do is, is um, connect to each other through awareness, through communication of their vibes, and they signal each other. So it's, it's this grand internet of soul consciousness that they're connected yeah. to. I think, I'm not sure if that was the one where he gave the example of the whales under the ocean. Yeah, I think so. And, and, and that's true. It's like whales communicate under the ocean through sound and they hear each other's sounds and then their sounds actually have meaning to them. Right. And, that, so, and they can do that over great miles and miles. They can hear each other. Oh, yeah. They can almost cross oceans that way. And we think that's fantastical. Yeah, but, you know. but actually, remember that it's non-local out there. So there is no 
space trouble to communicate with any souls that are in any place time uh, you know other time or other place they just create the intention of reaching those souls and the intention gets through it's a quantum computer of the i universe. think that i think that's why he gave me the example of the whales under the ocean right you know he wanted me to understand there's i actually think he wanted me to understand there's some kind of a similarity um, in, you know, it's really hard for us to conceive of how whales do that, but they do it naturally the way that spirits in, in their soul time do it naturally. Um, this is the way they communicate. They, they just do it in a very sensitive level that's very hard for us to understand. It's telepathic and somehow, mm -hmm. they, you know, there's a network of communication through intention that always gets the right souls in, in, the, in the time sequence that it needs to for them to gather together as they need to. So, but it's all in the moment of, of awareness. And then, then I asked him if there was any downtime out there because <laughs> they don't have to sleep. <laughs> no, they don't get tired and say, oh, it's time to rest. Oh, I got to, I better, you know, I'm really wearing myself out doing all this stuff out here. It's, you know, it, again, we're coming from our own experience of, of the limitations of the human mind and body. And he's, his response was, was beautiful. And um, there's, there's no, um, idea out there of anything but creation and they're constantly creating their reality through intention that and they go from intent to intent to intent so time doesn't play a role it's not like oh you know i've just worn myself out with all these intentions right i just flew to pluto and back and now i got to take a nap <laughs> right it's that there's no consciousness out there about um, fatigue because it, it, it's all creation. It's just the power of creation, and creation can do just about anything, and uh, including travel <laughs> because <laughs> there's it's non-local, so they can right. be anywhere they need to be when they need to be there, and and so. It's, it's really beautiful to understand their nature of life, of reality, to understand in some ways how limited we are, but also how we're programmed to be that way. Well, you know, I want to say something kind of in the positive direction about that, because I think a lot of times we we say we're limited here on earth. And, and I kind of want to, I'm all about the positive message to myself these days. Good. And what I think, what I think I, I am hearing from my brother and, and, and others is that our soul chose this earth experience to experience uh, time in a certain way, given the life we chose. And we did that because all my understanding of what I'm getting is all time is a way for consciousness to experience itself and to learn how to refine focus. If I guess that's, that's probably a poor word to use, but refine focus to get closer and closer like that spiral to a very pure focus. If you want to say that focus of love and that's kind of, we're always kind of doing that with, you know, it takes a while for me to think about assembling my sandwich before I can eat my sandwich, right? But on the other side, you, you, you are going to have this ability to have things happen with thought. And that's, an, I guess, an, a very powerful thing. Well, I think what you're talking about is that we, we've come here to make sandwiches or whatever it is we need to do. <laughs> right. and be successful or not and that's our story and we have all these stories here and that's ideal for the evolution of life 
And so we're advancing the universe by putting ourselves through this dimension of exploration, but, uh, and often the hard way. You know, not every sandwich is easy to make. And, mm -hmm. and then we, our souls benefit from, so when the life is over and we're out there and we have more ease of creation out there, we don't have to create as much hardship, we choose to come back here for more of that. <laughs> well, you know, we ch I think now also that we learn here to choose our thoughts very wisely. Um, That's good, yes. Because they do have a life of their own and an energy of their own. And I think that's the point, is we're learning how to think wisely. I love that. Well, I think that's true. Yeah. We're evolving. We're helping evolution by learning lessons, you know, learning how to make better sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Metaphor <laughs> metaphorically speaking. <laughs> right. And life keeps moving forward. So, Terry Lynn Siegel, this is so much fun talking with you. And I know. I really appreciate it. To discuss. And... Um, and we'll do uh, also a uh, future show shows with um, Vicki who joined us in a previous show and she mm -hmm. gets information from out there, but through other means. And, uh, and it's exciting. This is very exciting. So, and Terry, you're the author of Never Parted. It's a wonderful book, the story of your um, journey with your brother. So thanks so much for being on Energy Still. And there's Thank a website so or is a, a way to, uh, yeah, yeah. terrysegal.com. And that's S-E-G-A-L. T-E-R-R-I-S-E-G-A-L. Exactly. Wonderful. Terry, thanks. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, it's always great. fun. Great. And this is Peter Roth, your host of Energy Stew at PRN.FM. I can be reached at Peter at Heart River, H-E-A-R-T, river.org. I'd love to hear from you, and thanks so much for listening.